Hello, I'm Robin Carson, Head of Patient-Centered Outcomes Research at Allergan, and I'm here to tell you about the development and psychometric evaluation of the Diabetic Gastroparesis Symptom Severity Diary, or DGSSD. Diabetic gastroparesis is a condition defined as delayed gastric emptying in the absence of mechanical obstruction, and it is characterized by GI symptoms, including postprandial fullness, nausea, bloating, abdominal pain, and vomiting. A key issue for emerging therapies for diabetic gastroparesis is that currently available PRO measures do not meet the U.S. Food and Drug Administration requirements to support product labeling claims. In order to address this gap, we developed the DGSSD in full accordance with the FDA's PRO guidance to evaluate symptoms important to patients in evaluation of treatments for diabetic gastroparesis. To establish the concepts of importance to patients, we conducted focus groups with diabetic gastroparesis patients. Based on the feedback from these patients, a six-item DGSSD was developed to assess the severity of key diabetic gastroparesis symptoms, including early satiety, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain and bloating, as well as vomiting frequency. Postprandial fullness was later added to the instrument following regulatory advice. The items were then tested and refined through cognitive debriefing interviews with diabetic gastroparesis patients, ensuring that the final DGSSD items were clear and easy to read and that a 24-hour re recall period was an appropriate length. To understand the reliability, validity, and responsiveness of the instrument, we conducted analyses of the DGSSD individual items and several composite scores using data from the Rellin-Rellin clinical trials. Findings showed that the measurement properties were generally strong for the weekly averages of daily items and composite scores. Item level interclass correlation coefficients ranged from 0.79 for vomiting to 0.97 for abdominal pain and bloating, while correlations with other instruments matched the hypothesized patterns. Findings also supported the ability of the instrument to discriminate between defined patient subgroups and responses to treatment. Multiple methods, including factor analysis, supported the computation of a composite score based on items addressing nausea, abdominal pain, bloating, and postprandial fullness. In conclusion, qualitative and quantitative evidence presented in this manuscript support the use of the DGSSD as a reliable and valid PRO measure from which to derive endpoints to evaluate treatment benefit in future diabetic gastroparesis clinical trials.